Hi, today I am going to show you how to make a pop can into a wind spinner, like this. And you're going to need some supplies. You're going to need an X-Acto knife with a pointed blade and some extra blades in case one breaks. You're going to need a Sharpie. These are for dark colored cans like black ones. And the Sharpie tends to dry out on the cans for some reason, so some scratch paper. Super glue. I have some fishing line split shot. And you'll get a close-up of that later. And of course, fishing line. Don't use wire to hang them because the wire will scratch on the metal and it makes this horrible grating noise. It's worse than fingers on a chalkboard. It's terrible. This is 30 pound test line. You also need some acetone, if you want, and cotton balls. And then also some of these little uh, ball bearing swivels. And these are also from fishing. That's what they look like. You can get the barrel ones too, but these work much better. And then of course cans. And you also need a flexible tape measure. And preferably some snips. Scissors work, but these uh, can get really close to the knots that I cut. And I can also shut the split shots with them without having to squish them. Okay, first thing to prepare the can is to wash it out and then take the tab off and put your finger in there and make sure that that little tab is pushed all the way up against the top of the can. And then I'm going to take our blade or you know, whatever else you have and flip this little thing around. You see this? I'm going to turn it so that it faces out, like that. Oh, one more thing. You'll need a punch. So this is a little tiny punch. Find the seam on the can, and that's where you'll see a line down the can where the paint is dark. See that? That's just a good place to start your tape. Wrap it around. Sharpie. And then mark every half inch. All the way around the top and bottom of the can. And then when you get back to the seam, there will be one that's just a little bit bigger. See that? And what you can do is just make an extra little tick next to it to make it even. And just use the bigger tick. And that way it won't look lopsided. Right to the bottom. Now we're going to take the tape measure and you want to find the two that correspond to each other and then count over on the bottom to the left or right three. You can also, you know, experiment with counting five or two or you know whatever you want. Three is a good number. That gives you this kind of a spiral. And so I'm going to wrap the tape. This is kind of difficult. And by kind of, I mean if you have arthritic cans, it really doesn't play nice. Okay. Like that. So that it's lined up and you can make marks on the can.
And like I said, the Sharpies dry out for some reason on the cans. And then just keep doing that, going over one all the way around the can. And you'll get lines on the can, like that. And once you get all the, the whole can done, on the bottom of the can, you'll hit resistance on the two ends of these because this part is thicker than this one. And you want to start at the bottom to make the puncture holes. Do not hold the blade like this. You will chip the blade and little tiny sharp pieces of metal will go flying and hit you in the eye and your mother will kill you. Hold it like that on the line and then push it in. And make the cut all the way to the bottom of the paint. And you'll do that for all of them, all the way around. And then after you get those done, oops, my blade came out. Mew. Mew. Are we done? Okay. We can cut it later. Okay. Then you're going to cut away from you. Don't cut toward you. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. <laughs> you're going to cut away from you, up the lines, toward the top. They don't have to be perfect. Also for this, you can use a Dremel or a pair of scissors if you can get them in there. If you use scissors, it is going to be razor sharp. Um, if you use an X-Acto knife, it's not going to be that sharp. A Dremel, uh, depending on what kind of wheel you get, it can be sharp. Sometimes it's not. It's also loud and it takes a lot of time. But just be patient, take your time. You'll want to push in and up at the same time. And stop at the top where you get a little more resistance. About right there. Now if you get the whole can done, it looks like this. And I'm going to show you the last two. Uh, cuts on the can because it loses its integrity and it wants to buckle. So I'm just going to push it up a little bit on both of them. Hold it from the bottom. Get as much as I can. I am cutting two at the same time here. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to have to put my fingers in there, so it's not that sharp, don't worry. Okay, and then I'm going to hold it so that I have something to pull against. And this one you want to be really patient with because it can take a bit. Don't crush your can. Before we do anything else, take a little acetone and it will take off all the sharpie marks.
And then rotate the can a little bit and it will pop out. And then we want to fold back opposite the direction of the spiral. So this can is spiraled downward. We're going to fold it that way at a 45. So it looks like that. You're going to do that around the entire top and bottom. side note here. You can leave them like this, especially for taller cans. It looks really cool because it looks like a vase. And you don't have to do the bottom part and it'll still spin. Be very careful when you're doing this. Sometimes you can tear the aluminum. So it just goes kind of slow. Make sure and pick up, there we go, see, see what that did, tore it a little bit, so I'm going to pick up a little more. Okay, now you notice it looks a little squished, and that's okay, because the next part is the punch. This one, um, <clears throat> you always want to punch from the inside of the can out because you're going to put, um, the can's going to have to hang on something and it's going to be on the inside of the can, obviously. And if you punch it to the inside, there's going to be all these little, see that? That sharp stuff? And it's going to cause friction and it won't spin right. So inside out. For the first one, Stick our punch inside, right to the middle of the bottom. Give it a good punch. Mine didn't go through. There it goes. Okay. And then for the top, <clears throat> it's a little harder. I'm going to show you with a mark. See that little spot? That's what you're aiming for. That's the middle. It's right behind the rivet of that thing that we turned around. Except you gotta do it from the inside. So go through the side of the can and get right behind that rivet. And I'm gonna have to put it down for that. It helps if you put like a towel or something underneath it to catch. make it a little bigger if you want. It doesn't have to be though. And now you can shape it and you can squash it to make it tall, you can squish it this way, or you can, usually I just shape them one by one however they look and make them look symmetrical. And that's it. After that you just have to hang it. And there are all kinds of ways to do that. Here I have, these are going into these. It's a fencing wire that's coated in some kind of vinyl or something that I had laying around. And I've made them into little hearts and there's three of them. So they're going to hang like that. And the cans will spin in the middle of them. Another idea is to use tubing. Uh, this is fuel line, and I actually made one with this. I put the wire inside the fuel line and then shaped it. I also have one outside that has air tubing, which is clear, and I filled it with rocks. And then I just got a splicer to connect it at the top. <coughs> uh, these are the little swivels, 
And I would put these on both the top and the bottom. But I was going to show you something. There's two parts. See that? And you can put lubricant in there, like WD-40. But you always want to make sure that they're hanging down so that rain and stuff doesn't get in there. So always face them this way. And then these are the split shots. I would hang one, but it takes a long time because there's lots of knots and everything. But, um, just put some in my hands here. Okay, way up here. And you just squish around the line. <clears throat> it is a good idea to use weights on them because if you hang a can by itself, it's just going to fly around everywhere. But if you want it to stay up like this and spin, put weights on the line on the inside through the can. And it also, if you put the weights on the inside, it acts as like a bearing so that it spins on top of the little round weight. You can use a bead too if you want. Tips would be things like don't cut toward you, don't use the knife the wrong way, um, if you have really pretty nails and you don't want to get them all messed up, wear gloves. Um, other than that, there's not really much to it, so uh, have some fun. Hello, it's me again. I was going to show you the finished product and also tell you what the super glue was for because I forgot that in the last video. So, there it is. You can see all the swivels. Don't mind my cat, he's eating dinner. Um, the super glue, if you look at the knots, that's what I use them for. I put the super glue on the knots so they don't come undone. But this is the finished product. And all these hearts spin independently of each other and the cans. So. Let's get the top one going. 